is currently the region. Martin is currently the Regional Sales Director Marine, serving Inuspec, Mutual Marine customers in Asia Pacific. He is a marine engineer by profession and started his sailing career with Neptune Orient Lines of Singapore and later American Eagle Tanker. He has taken a few roles after coming ashore in 2006, including Senior Surveyor and Auditor and Business Development Manager for Lloyd's Register Asia in Singapore. He later joined Rigmas Ship Management Singapore as a vessel manager and then moved on to Inuspec Limited in 2014 as Marine Technical Sales Manager for Asia Pacific. Martin holds a COC Class 1 from MPA Singapore and a Master Degree in Maritime Studies from Nayam Technological University, NTU, Singapore. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Martin Chu, coming up on the
leadership and the people in the office have the knowledge and experience with this kind of group. Some of them can uh, uh, rather dangerous, for example, ammonia, LNG, and things like that. Therefore, we emphasize a lot on awareness and training. We share knowledge with the, the people that is going to be operating the new food. That is one of the biggest challenges that many shipping companies are facing. Okay, so what is midterm? Uh, midterm is something like 2040. Alternative fuel, most of the current alternative fuel that we see today are not completely carbon free. So we believe that uh, up to 2030, this is going to be the bridge before we reach the end game of decarbonization, which is carbon free in 2050. Okay, uh, the industry will have to continue to look for more technologies, which is currently not available, or maybe even looking into even newer fuels. Okay, uh, this again will be complemented by more efficient new buildings. However, long term, what is there? New technology, carbon zero, carbon capture, this is something that maybe even nuclear energy, not something that anyone can answer today. We have not arrived there. So in summary, what I can say is the current situation is very complex. What is beyond 2030, we are all guessing. Uh, there are some owners not even building, they not decided on what kind of alternative fuel that they will be using. They are not wrong because Singapore being the largest smuggling port, uh, I think in one of the decarbonization uh, conference that we had, it is almost impossible for the marine industry to have eight different kind of fuels. Uh, from day one until today, we have probably three or four different kind of fuel, but the industry will not be able to run if we, there are eight number of fuels, eight different kind of fuels. Okay, the situation is very complex. We haven't found the silver bullet or the, even the technology to fuel the future vessels. Again, it is not one size fits all kind of uh, solution. It might fit for a certain kind of trade, a certain kind of ship, but not all of them. Uh, the solution that is available today is not the end game. Like I said earlier, it's only a bridge to the final objective. The uh, reason why we're saying that is because most of the alternative fuel they still have carbon, uh, except maybe ammonia. As you can see, this is the carbon footprint of all the fuel that we're talking about here. We have uh, methane, methanol, ammonia. Ammonia is close to zero. However, is it really zero? Uh, Today, the industry is taking the well to make approach, uh, no, sorry, the tend to make approach. However, to actually see the full carbon footprint of the fuel, they will probably have to move to well to make. Okay, so what does it mean? Today, we are only interested in when the fuel comes on board your ship and what goes into the tank and to the make, that is the carbon footprint. However, uh, to have a good representation of like how much carbon footprint of this fuel, we need to take the well approach because some of this energy that we are talking about today is very carbon intensive in, in terms of production. Okay, uh, what is the right alternative fuel? That is a very big question and of course this will also be very much driven by the cost. So if you look at the alternative fuel that we have today, there are many types of them. We are breaking down into all the types of ships that you have. You have all these kind of alternative fuel. So what actually determines when to use what? We should not forget about price as well. So if you can see, this 100% mark here is the indication of the price of VLS and gold today. And how is this compared to the other types of fuel? For example, LNG. LNG is probably 300 times. Uh, if you're talking about methanol, maybe they're on par today. If you're talking about green ammonia, green ammonia is 800 times, which is indicated by this one. I'm not going to go into all the details. Biodiesel as well, probably 220 times. Uh, a lot of consideration will be taken uh, to decide what actual fuel is going to be used. Price and of course availability is one of the major factors as well. So here, uh, which alternative fuel, no fuel is picking up? Many are still dependent on fossil fuel. Uh, why do I say this? Because when you look at the new building uh, that we have, uh, there are still many ships that is built with fossil fuel and alternative fuel. Alternative fuel means you have the option to use an alternative fuel, but your main fuel is still fossil fuel. And the issue will be that the, the ship that we built today will be around for the next 20 to 25 years. So if you look at this table here, uh, this is of course uh, from Clarkson. New building vessel today, uh, 
65% of them is still with fossil fuel with or without straw. You can see there's only 65% of the fuel ships that is built uh, that is using alternative fuel. So second option would be fossil fuel, gas ready, with or without struggle, and then you have fossil fuel with or with, with ammonia ready, and you have fossil fuel with ammonia ready. All kind of combination, uh, but what I'm trying to say here is only 35% that is without uh, fossil fuel. Okay. Again, the ship that is built today will be around for the next 20 to 25 years. So the journey is really long. Are we going to achieve uh, it completely without fossil fuel in the next 20 years? And if you look from other sources, uh, the, this is the future of fossil fuel. Uh, if you look at the bar graph on the uh, left, this is from APS, and this is their prediction of fossil fuel up to even 2050. So we are looking at, if this prediction is correct, there will still be around 14% of fossil fuel in 2050. And of course, this one on the right is from Total Energies, which is one of the oil major from France. Uh, today, we have like about 30,000 uh, metric tons, 30 million metric tons. And of course, if you are looking at uh, 2050, this is still going to be about 33% 30, of fossil fuel that is going to be in our industry. So what do we do? Uh, Spec, and we are helping a lot of uh, owners in this journey to decarbonization. One of our products have been endorsed by Class NK. Uh, one of the major tasks that a lot of owners are doing is trying to reduce fuel consumption from your current fuel. So Class NK have given us an endorsement to keep about 2 to 3.9% fuel saving. And a lot of people have already put our solution into the SEMP part 3 and this is what you can see, yeah. Otama product in terms of helping in fuel reduction and this SDMP has been endorsed or approved by many other classes as well. Uh, that is my last slide. Thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. And like I said from the beginning, we uh, are being represented in India by Emma. Thank you very much. Passion for that. Uh, it was very inspiring to know how the thoughts that you had to share. Um, I'm afraid that we have to we'll have to say a little bit of a goodbye to you, but we missed having you here, Martin. But uh, thank you. Yes, Martin, go ahead. Well, thank you. My pleasure to be a part of this event. Thank you very much for the invite. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Yes, uh, Martin, on your behalf, we would like to present a small token of our gratitude. And we're doing it, uh, Ritu is here to collect it on your behalf. So, thank you so much for being here with us. As I hope you can see. Um, Ritu, could you come up and join us on the stage, please? Thank you. Oh, yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. And that was for Mr. Martin.